Blah, 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 green carpet media, blah, 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 heroes of the storm game, blah, 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 Travis. So that's going to be my introduction. That's the token introduction for everyone. You know that, right? It goes something along the lines of welcome to my channel. What's up, everyone? This is blah, blah, blah. So you know what? I'm going to spare you with the, uh, the typical introduction and give you a, a really bland off the wall kind of intro for you guys. So today we got an interesting matchup. We got the blue team with a bright wing solo support with a Murden, Greymane, uh, Zagara, and we got a, one of my personal favorites. We got the gold Dan, my favorite mage on the scene. Love him. Love him to death. And on the red team, we got a Leeming, Dahaka, Arth Artanis, Rhaegar, and Falstad. It looks like the red team actually got that first kill very interesting this might be a big team fight game we got going on however we are on black hearts bay which means it shouldn't be a team fight game at all it should actually be all about them coins collecting them coins and just making sure that black heart is uh taken care of you know very well compensated bright wing is going to phase shift in and the blue team is going to get down very hard onto the red team. Falstad is in a little bit too deep. His barrel roll was for not as he barrel rolled into the blue team and went down. Ooh, look at Lee Ming getting that pick off with those arcane missiles on the gray main. He did not stand a chance. That was a very good snipe. Usually you do not want to be in range of that snipe, but you know. He, she was definitely a range. Rhaegar does have five coins. Dahaka has five coins. The red team does have enough to turn in. They might get the first turn in. Murden is getting extremely low, about 30% health. He's got to back out. And it looks like everyone's got to regroup. Like I was saying, red team does have the maximum amount of coins needed for the first turn in on uh, Blackheart. And I would recommend them turn in instead of team fighting here because it's all about that Blackheart and his cannon. Come on, guys. You got, you got to know this. And the blue team's got to have someone stationed on black car, making sure that they're not turning the coins. It's a really um, PvE-heavy map, in my personal opinion. Dahak is getting very low. Regar is getting very low. Very dangerous situation for the two of them. I don't think Dahaka should be going in that far, but maybe maybe what happens is that, you know, you pull in Muradin, you tease him with that low health, and then you jump on him, just like they did. Li Ming is so low. Regar better get a heal on her, and he does. He gets that heal off onto Li Ming. Artanis wants blood on Goldan. Goldan is so low. Looks like there might be a lick on the Goldan. Can he get it off? It looks like the lick from Dahaka does not go through, and it looks like the red team is just going to back. Artanis is thinking about rotating to the mid, but it looks like they just want to stay in the in the bottom lane and fight for whatever reason. Maybe it's a strategy that I'm unaware of. Maybe these guys are beyond my comprehension, which is totally possible because, you know, like I always say, I'm silver and gold league. I'm nothing freaking special, baby. Don't even, don't even sweat it. So it looks like Dahaka and Rhaegar are going to pick up some uh, additional coinage. They have a total of 12 so far, which is pretty good. I mean, they could turn in. They're about to get another 14 coins here while Muradin and um, Greymane are taking out the Ogre Siege Camp. So they're going to get uh, a total of four coins apiece. Uh, no one has turned in yet. They do want to keep team fighting. Maybe it's about getting that fort down. Maybe it's about getting the cannon towers down, uh, the wall down, and then uh, what Blackheart will do is will focus on the fort itself. Maybe that's the strategy, guys. Maybe you can correct me down in the comments and say, Travis, you are a freaking moron. You should really know the strategy before you start commentating on these games. Greyman is going to dive in on that Leeming. She is a bit of a squish, so he does do that burst damage. He does the sustain damage in human form, and then he does the burst damage damage in worgen form so that's what he's all about murden is trying to tank for his team it looks like brightwing is getting focused by dahaka there goes the tongue artanis is extremely low i think the red team is going to back out they have some t they have most of the, or uh, two of their teammates are at 20 percent while the blue team sits pretty comfortably right now i think everyone is at a comfortable position um Dahaka is extremely, extremely in trouble, going in a little bit too far. He might not be able to make it, but like he's doing, he's debating everyone in there. And Muradin and Greymane could not secure that kill on Dahaka. He is Jabates, and he is going to get everyone down. But there you go, guys. It looks like Rhaegar was able to turn in his coinage, and uh, Blackheart's going to start firing here. So the first round of firing is going to go through. Um... 
you can see that uh, Gold Dan is actually going Corruption build. It's a little bit different from Flame Strike build that most of the professionals go. This is why I like Hero League, guys. This is why I like it because these guys do strange, wonky, crazy builds. You can see that Grey Mane, you know, he's doing the typical Gillanese cocktail build. Muradin's doing nothing special. Brightwing's doing nothing special. Um, I think Sigara might be doing something a little bit weird going uh, Roachling build, but, you know, I'm not really a big uh, Zagara player, but I am a Gul'dan player and I do like the Corruption build. It does a ton of damage and people just, uh, you know, people, people definitely suspect it, but, you know, it's, it's definitely damage that bites you in the butt because it's damage over time. I like it. That's all I'm saying. Rhaegar is going some kind of uh, Lightning Wolf build, which is pretty good. I, I don't mind that at all. Nothing to... Oh, look at that double kill. Zagara and Falstad tango in the middle, dueling uh, to the extreme, and they both take each other down. Pretty amazing fight right there. So, looks like the uh, south camp here, the blue team, is trying to push down this camp. And it looks like uh, the, on the red team, Rhaegar did leave the game, but he did uh, rejoin there. So it looks like uh, it's uh, the red team is going to be fine. He's not; they're not going to be playing with an intermediate computer. Dahaka is debating again. He is the master of the debate, and look at Falstead. He's doing as much damage as possible. There goes the new phase ship ability, where uh, Brightwing does put a shield onto Muradin and. Uh, Brightwing, here's the new addition, puts a shield on himself. There, then they went down. You would think that um, maybe Dahaka would have helped this boy out a little bit. Falstead was trying to do that damage, but Dahaka was trying to stay behind the wall. Granted, Dahaka was at like 20%, so maybe he was a little bit skeptical about going in. Zagara goes down. Uh, there, there goes a disintegrate from Li Ming, trying to take down Murden, but he is going to walk away. Uh, Rhaegar does not want to chase that battle, especially since there are two other teammates, or three other teammates for the blue team still left. Greymane and Goldman are down south, so I think the chase might have been a little bit warranted, but, you know, Brightwing was in the north, kind of close, so maybe he was kind of sketch about chasing him. I, I would have chased him down, but like I said, I probably would have got killed, guys. There goes the Haka. Trying to chase Goldan. I think Goldan's going to go down here. He does have a... He could have a... Um a uh, horror, horrify right here, which he does, and he probably needs to do a drain life, but it was no, there was no success on that. Brightwing does face shift down, and Falstead is going to go down with his puny health points, not able to escape the damage of the great Grey Mane. The red team does get another Black Hearts um, ship going, and the red team is doing fairly well. They have taken down uh, two of the three. Uh, forts of the blue team and they still have a, uh, a complete um, they have all their forts still up it looks like the battle is raging on for another black hearts uh, turn in here. Grey Man and Murden are trying to lock down Rhaegar. Rhaegar has put down an Earth Binding Totem, which is going to slow the blue team down significantly. Brightwing is trying to phase shift onto Grey Mane, which is successful. There is an Emerald Wind pushing everyone away. Grey Mane shield is about to fall off. He's got to be extremely careful. I would suggest not going in. There's the Singer Ray from Leeming getting that reset. And um, the RK missiles are flying in and killing the rest of the blue team. You got to be extremely careful when you got a Leeming or even a Genji on the field, anybody that has those resets that can start doing damage, that can start doing that snowball damage. That's why Grey Mane might have been overzealous, might have been a little bit overconfident having that bright wing shield, but that bright wing shield, I think only lasts about 10 seconds and you cannot, um, you, you, cannot, you cannot rely on it for too long. You can see that Golden has a corruption build of 27. He's got to get a total of 40 to complete that corruption build, but he's going to do an extreme amount of damage. You can see Dahaka is at seven stacks of his life, of his essence uh, build, and you can see that Artanis is at 27. I think Falstead is going down here. I don't think he's going to be able to escape. Dwarf on dwarf action as the hammer falls on Falstead. His bird flies from the sky and plummets to the ground very gracefully and beautifully. So, 
You're gonna notice uh, this is this might be an unusual commentary because you you know I don't have my second co-host here, uh, Stencho. But we also might get another co-host here soon uh, by the name of Dad. Uh, my father might be commentating with me, and he knows very he's a Heroes of the Storm expert. So you guys are gonna really enjoy him. Um, I know Stencho, uh, you know, she she doesn't talk a lot during the commentating, but she does bring an element that I know you guys really enjoy. So that's why I like having her on. At least I like having her because she she kind of breaks apart the monotonous of just keeping on talking. That was an ex there goes the red team's healer. No heals for anyone. Li Ming is going to go down. It looks like Artanis is swooping back in, trying to uh, get that shield going. But, you know, it's all for naught. There is no way he's going to be able to beat a Muradin and a Gul'dan. He's going to fall there uh, with a 40-second rest timer. Dahaka is going to walk away. Master Jebater. He's, there's nothing to Jebate. He does not have a team to Jebate with. So he's going to walk away, get out of there. They did. The red team uh, did capture that southern... Um, Bruiser camp, so there is a plus there. They don't have to worry about a blue team pressing that southern fort too hard. Uh, even though you know they they they'll it looks like they're tangoing down there. They do want that southern fort, but I you know it's going to be a little bit risky. I don't know if they can actually do it. They do have a minion wave pulling in, but you can see that leaming and uh, Dahaka are there to defend. There goes the disintegrate onto the blue team. The blue team is backing out. The lick <laughs> did miss. So uh, there is no pull in. There is no extreme damages coming. Uh, the red team has to have two people down south to defend. It looks like Artanis and Rhaegar are up in the middle lane trying to uh, delay the turn in. Goldan and Greymane have six coins. Uh, Zugara has five. That is enough to complete another Blackheart turn in. So there goes Murden being the tanky dwarf that he is. Uh, trying to stall for his teammates so that they can turn in uh, for Blackheart. Blackheart is probably going to take down this northern fort for the red team. And uh, that's going to put the blue and red team on even footing. It looks like the red team is falling behind just a little bit. They were uh, kills ahead. They were forts ahead. But it looks like everything is neck and neck. The Both teams are level 16. But you know what's very interesting? Look look at Gul'dan. He has not picked two heroic abilities. Isn't that kind of odd? Does he not know that he, they're available? Maybe he's a little bit too uh, into the game right now, but I just noticed that he did not pick his heroic abilities. Very interesting. Maybe he's so meta that he's waiting for other people to pick their heroic abilities. I extremely doubt it, though. There's Jebate Master going down. The Godzilla monster, Dinosaur Dahaka, is falling. Finally, Matthew Broderick was able to take him down with a load of fish. Uh, they did uh, Jebate the old Godzilla monster with fish, take him down with Brightwing, Mothra, some people call him that. Um... How many Godzilla references can I do this uh, cast, guys? Uh, let me know down in the comments what Godzilla references I missed. Let's take a look at some of the damages going on here. You can see my boy Gold Dan doing 33,000 damage, but the other mage on the other side, Leeming, doing 37,000. I would say that the team damage favors the blue team a little bit more. You can see that there's a few uh, upper 20,000s while everyone else on the red team is below 15,000. So the blue team does have the damage in line. And they are the damage team, um, in my personal opinion, you know. But they do have, the red team has some pluses here. They have the Dahaka, they have that Artanis, Artanis Dahaka. Kind of consider bruiser-like uh, tanks, so they can get in there and do damage. But obviously not enough, or obviously not more than what an assassin can do. Like Greymane, uh, like Zagara, she can do some damage. Whew, excuse me. Burp. And Goldan. Goldan, my boy, he's doing tons of damage. You can see that Goldan finally picked his uh, talents there, uh, going uh, that spell damage and going that additional damage on the corruption. Uh, that's always a plus, I think. Uh, so everyone's just gathering, um, you know, the blue team is ga gathering bruiser camps 
and everyone looks like they're about to skirmish in the middle. Murden taking a little bit of poke damage, going a little bit low, about 70% damage. That any any little bit of damage, even if it's on a tank, guys, is good damage, especially when you're about to start a team fight. Gold Dan has unlocked his corruption. You can see the three ticks go, and the three ticks go back. Murden is jumping in way too deep. He had to pop. Um, he had to pop his stone form. Or his, uh, what do you call that? Uh, not stone form. That is his, uh, ch -ch 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 uh, you know, guys, it's essentially stone form. You know what I'm talking about, the Warcraft 2 ability where he goes into stone form. Brightwing gets pulled up in a terrible spot. She is going to emerald one away, but she is definitely going to go down. No way she's going to be able to survive that. Greymane is uh, getting a little bit low murdered, and the blue team does have to fall out because they do not have their healer. Rhaegar is still at half health. He's getting a little bit low, but he is still alive, able to heal his team. Greymane wants a little bit of piece of him, but uh, that was a little bit too overzealous. But Artanis and Falstag go down. And also Zagara goes down at well. It's going to be a three on two. There is the disintegrate from the Li Ming, but she is out of mana. She's got to pull back as much as possible. Greymane is getting way too deep. Gold Dance at full health. That life tap was not necessary. In my personal opinion, he had full. He had about full mana. Life tapping was uh, not necessary. Um, it looks like the red team does have to pull back. They do not have enough health. They do not have enough mana to take down the sport and engage. But they are going to go for the turn in. They do have enough. There is 13 coins on Rhaegar, and there's five on Dahaka. Enough to make Blackheart start shooting his cannon towards the blue team. Now, guys, this is, uh, like I was saying, this is an extremely close game here. Um, the red team is going to take a keep, uh, get down the cannon walls for the blue team. I don't think they're going to be able to get that middle fort with Blackheart's uh, cannons. I could be wrong, but it is extremely close. It's going to definitely whittle down the defenses of the middle fort for the red team. If they do get a get another uh, team kill going, they could definitely push that middle fort and do uh, or that middle keep and do an extreme amount of damage. Well, I've been. Yeah, I've been petting my cat. He's sitting in my lap, and I'm, I got cat here, Ugh, all in my mouth. It's disgusting. Uh, so the blue team does get a, uh, a horror onto Rhaegar, and he is going to fall a 65 second res time. That a six. You would think about it. It's a minute, a minute of your life, a minute of your day. That's not a long time, but a minute in Hero of the Storm when the game lasts only about 22 minutes long. That's a uh, that's a pretty good chunk of uh, that's a pretty good chunk of the game right there to be dead. So. Rhaegar is down, which means the red team is minus the healer, which means the blue team is going to get a turn in. Gold Dan went Demonic Circle. Not one of my favorite. Uh, it's fun, don't get me wrong, but I would have gone for the Horrify um, uh, ultimate at 20 doing uh, additional damage. That's probably one of my favorites. Um, we also have uh, Muradin going Hardened Skin. I do like that. Emerald wins an additional... Uh, I think what I think it just gives you three pushes on Emerald Win. I could be totally incorrect about that, but um, so good talents on that side. Ancestral healing for Rhaegar. I don't really agree with that. I do like the Brushstock for Dahaka, and um, yeah, everyone else's talents look pretty good. Um, yeah, the uh, the pulse. Uh, the Pulse Charge on Artanis, that's uh, decent, but, you know, I would have gone for the uh, the Shielding for Artanis. That's 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 just my cup of tea, guys. I, I like to be as defensive as possible. Uh, my friends, you'll know me as the defensive guy. That's all I'm saying. So it looks like there's going to be a big team fight going here. You can see how much damage Goldan already has on Rhaegar. He's at half health. Rhaegar goes in for a little bite onto Muradin. Dahaka's going full force into the back line of the blue team. There goes Murden. There goes Brightwing. That was a pretty good battle for the red team. I think they came out um, very nicely, but the blue team does grab Blackheart. I think this gives the red team enough time to attack the middle keep if they want to, but I think the red team is just going to back out and maybe get some of that coinage. I 
think Blackheart is going to be able to take away that uh, the red team's north keep here. It's going to go down, which means that there's only going to be one keep available for the red team. The blue team has taken a sizable lead in this game, and here comes the boss battle. But it may be the blue team is on to this. You can see Goldan and Zagar. They're kind of lingering around that area, but I don't think they're going to be able to make it in time. The boss is already about like 35% health, 30% health. They are on to him, but I don't don't think that they're going to go for it, honestly. Li Ming is getting out of dodge. She doesn't want to be caught out, but the red team is going to, they are going to secure the boss camp, and the boss is going to push that northern keep. I don't think he's going to be able to get the keep, especially with the entire blue team up north defending that keep, but we'll definitely see, guys. We will definitely freaking see what happens. The boss is already at about 75% health. There's no way he's going to be taking down that keep. Maybe he can get the wall down. Maybe. We'll see here. Um, the red team is turning into Blackheart. I think this is a good move, especially when the boss is um, is uh, taking on that northern keep. Yeah, he did get the wall down as predicted. The red team does capitalize on Blackheart. They are going to get that middle keep. Can they secure it? Now, once all the keeps are down, guys, this is what happens. If you can get some team kills like what is about to happen, look at Greymane. Is he going to be able to escape? Oh, my God. There goes the freaking pulse bo the pulse charge going down. Li Ming getting the kill, getting that reset, throwing out some of those disintegrates. Another reset down. See, this is what I'm talking about. The red team could go in for the core right now. Now that at least one keep is down, you can hit that core up, boy. You can hit that core up, and you can do that damage. They got to be extremely careful, though. There is a disintegrate onto Zagara, taking down the minions, not killing Zagara, but she's also what Li Ming is doing is also focusing on the minions, taking them out fast, so the red team's minions can push in. But you got to remember, Goldan's there. Uh, Goldan is there with the horrify, so they got to be extremely careful. He does have those corruption stacks going. Um, they have to be extremely cautious right now. I think it was a mistake not going for the core, especially when it's a 3v5. You might have been able to pick up some kills. You might have been able to push that middle lane. But uh, I think they kind of squandered it right now, in all honesty. You got to really look out for that. I'm not sure what uh, Hero League matchup this is. Uh, but, you know, you got to, any league, you got to be uh, cognizant of that. Look at Li Ming getting extremely low, about 1% health, but she survived because of the, uh, because of her uh, Blink's um, shield ability, uh, providing her with just enough resistance to the, uh, re to the corruption, to the damage over time, that she's able to gain a little bit of health from it. It looks like the blue team is cleaning up their southern lane. This is good. They want to push that out as much as possible, especially since the bruiser camp was pushing in. Uh, definitely, definitely want to clear that out. You can see that Goldan has completed his ability, like we mentioned before. Dahaka has completed his essence uh, quest, and uh, Artanis has completed his marksmanship quest. Uh, Rhaegar is running into all the corruptions possible. He is going to fall. He does not have an Earthbind Totem, or maybe he's already used the Earthbind Totem. It does give him a 90% slow. Uh, very good at escaping, very good at uh, claiming those kills with that 90% slow, but I don't think he was able to drop it because he probably already used it. I think he would have dropped it. Uh, we, he might have been able to escape, but I think he did a premeditated um, Earthbind Totem and he uh, was taken down because of it. Artanis going the incorrect direction. He is going to get taken down. He does a pulse bomb, blinding everyone. I call it a pulse bomb, but that's what it's called. It's called like a pulse charge or something. Yeah. Cat hair is officially down my throat right now. Ugh. So, the red team is down, and the blue team is pushing it. Fiercely in the middle lane. It looks like Brightwing is trying to take down Fall Steady. And um, the red team is playing relatively safe. I wouldn't call what they're doing safe per se, but they are not engaging in a total team fight. That's not to say that you don't have a murder and that Dwarf tosses into the battle. Uh, does a. Um, uh, does a hammer, stuns someone for about one second, and then the rest of the team catches up and is just in the stink. That's something that you don't want to do. But this Li Ming, man, 
she's been doing a lot of damage this game so you know any false move that the that the blue team might make you know that Li Ming might be able to capitalize on it gray main has gone for go, go for the throat i don't think i mentioned that so that Li Ming you know, she's got to be extremely careful because that gray main is eyeballing her and that go for the throat, I swear to you, will take her down to about half health. There goes the avatar. That's the word I was looking for. We're not stone poor. When I'm not thinking about it, I get it. Avatar is popped by, uh, by Muradin and Dahaka is trying to escape here. He does, he does not have his ultimate. He has already used it. Brightwing, the healer, has gone down. Goldan throwing a flame strike the opposite, or a fell strike the opposite direction. He portals out of there. Zagara is down. Uh, Murden and Z uh, Goldan are splitting lanes. And me, personally, you know what I think, guys? Red team should attack the core. They have five people up. Let's see what they can do. Let's see if they can capitalize on this at probably a 70 75 second death timer um goldman does not have his ultimate uh there goes the pulse bomb let's see what can happen here guys leeming is going back doing what she does she doesn't want to have an embarrassing defeat at the hands of the blue team so she is taking care of those minions back there oh man there goes artanis he is going to go down Rhaegar and falsed are having to back out here it looks like goldman is enough to do the damage uh, to some defensive damage here. So the blue team's core is at 82%. Uh, I think Li Ming uh, has walked away and the red team's core is getting attacked by minions and cannon towers, but it's at 99%. So the red team did uh, do what I thought was smart. Uh, however, maybe they should have sent Falstead back instead of Leeming because Falstead might have been able to clear the lanes, not real, not quicker, I wouldn't say, but he would have been able to clear the lanes with enough uh, ability to where he could just uh, where he could just fly back into the battle and maybe take down the core with a strong 5v3 team. Not exactly sure. Uh, you can see Rhaegar's here. He has his lightning shield build, so he's able to put the lightning shield onto the totem, do even more damage, double up that lightning shield damage, and... Um, ooh, sorry. I think that my mic is moving around here. I had to readjust it. Apologies about that, guys. This is actually a pretty long game. It seems like I've been talking for quite a while, 26 minutes uh in which is unusually long usually games last about 22 minutes but the teams are pretty even so you know even more even games seem to take a little bit longer you can see that Zagara still hasn't finished her quest and neither has gray main and they are pretty far into this match you want to finish those quests around level you know 18 19 and 20 so you can have them available to fight with um, it looks like the red team is currently in the lead. All their all their health pools are a little bit high, and it looks like Zagara is going to go down, but that, but followed by Artanis. Uh, Dahak is going to get the ancestral heal. Top back up. Greymane is so extremely low. There goes the Earthbinding Tonum, slowing the blue team by 90%. It looks like Brightwing is going to go down as well, and it looks like Murden might fall. I don't think he has a dwarf toss on cooldown. Actually, he does. There it is. It is now on cooldown. They are trying to chase him down. Look at Murden. He is just so sneaky dicky. He is gonna he's gonna escape going the complete opposite way of his core, which is a smart ability because they have no freaking clue where he is. This is bad. Why are they going the way? the keep side they need to be going towards the core look at the red team's core it is getting extremely low i think there's a siege camp bombarding it the red team needs to get in there man they need to get in there and do damage now they need to ignore goldan and hit the freaking core ignore goldan hit the core because the red team is getting hit by a siege camp and three cannon towers pushing in but there's five cannon towers hitting the core, but the red team is on top of the blue team's core. Who's going to take it down? Is it going to be the heroes or is it going to be the minions? It looks like the minions are going to win, and the red team beats the blue team. Oh my freaking god. Look at that. That was just disgusting right there. Those are the kind of wins that make you want to freaking quit the game right there in all honesty. You know the blue, the red, uh, you know the blue team right now is so happy, saying GG, saying lulls. You know the red team is just beating themselves up about what just happened. Blech. You know I would be puking my freaking brains out. Anyway, guys, uh, thank you for joining me today for an amazing Heroes of the Storm session. If you like what you saw here, please subscribe, please like, please leave a comment, guys. I would really, I would really. Uh, I would really be honored 
by you. Um, so this game uh, was specifically brought to you by Coco. I'm not sure if Coco's here on the end screen. It looks like he is not. But thank you, Coco, for submitting this game to uh, Hot Slog. And if you have any games that you want me to cast, please send them the green carpet mail at gmail.com. That's green carpet, M A I L, at gmail.com, guys. I would love to cast. Leave a comment. I will read your comments in uh, future commentary. Uh, so please feel free. Uh, this is Travis signing out, and until next time, adios.